increasing or decreasing recipe yields. Remember, yield is the number of servings a recipe makes. So for example, if we had a recipe that made two dozen cookies and we needed four dozen or we needed 10 dozen, we're gonna have to increase our recipe. If our recipe made eight dozen and we only needed two dozen, then we would need to decrease our recipe. So this is how we do it. We start with the formula that our desired yield divided by original yield gives us our conversion factor. For example, your recipe serves four and you need to serve eight. So our desired yield is the yield that we want to end up with. So that's what we want, it's what we desire. So if we need to serve eight, then our desired yield will be eight. So we're gonna divide that by our original yield. Our recipe serves four, so that's what it was originally. So we're gonna put four, okay? So we've got our desired yield divided by our original yield, which is eight divided by four, so that means our conversion factor is two. Eight divided by four equals two. That's the first step. Step two, multiply each ingredient by the conversion factor. So now that we have our conversion factor of two, we need to take each ingredient and multiply. The first step, we um, divided, this one we multiply, okay? So let's say this is our recipe, we've got ground beef, we've got two pounds of ground beef. So our conversion factor, which we have CF, that's our conversion factor, is two. We figured that out a minute ago. So we take each ingredient, multiply each ingredient by the conversion factor, two pounds, times our conversion factor of two gives us four pounds. And always remember you must have your units here. One pound of macaroni times two gives two pounds. And two teaspoons of salt times two, two times two is four. So that gives us four teaspoons. Okay, so this is how much we need to measure out to get our extra servings that we wanted to get in our recipe. So that's step two. Step three is we're gonna convert our answers to logical measurable amounts. So I want you to think about what equipment are we gonna to use to measure the ingredient. For example, on our previous board, we had salt and our original amount was two teaspoons. Our conversion factor was two, so our new amount was four teaspoons, okay? And four teaspoons is measuring four different things right here, okay? So if we remember that three teaspoons equals one tablespoon, we can convert our four teaspoons and we can say four teaspoons divided by the three teaspoons in a tablespoon will give us one, three, four divided by three, I'm going one time, and then there's one teaspoon left over. So we come out with one tablespoon, which is our first three teaspoons, and then one teaspoon left over. So one tablespoon plus one teaspoon. So we end up with this. Instead of having four teaspoons and measuring four times, we're gonna only measure twice. We're gonna measure one tablespoon and we're gonna measure one teaspoon. So that's a better measurable, more logical way to, um, to measure, okay? All right, so our steps were to take our desired yield, divide by our original yield, and that gives us a conversion factor. 
We take our conversion factor, we multiply it by each ingredient of the recipe, and that gives us our new recipe amount. And then the last thing we have to do is convert it to a logical measurable amounts. So let's try it one more time. And this time our recipe yield is three dozen. We're gonna make some sugar cookies and our recipe makes three dozen. So we need nine dozen, all right? So our desired yield, that's what we want, is nine dozen, okay? So we're gonna take nine dozen and we're gonna divide it by our original yield, which is three dozen. So nine divided by three equals three. So like magic, three is our conversion factor. All right, so here's our sugar cookie recipe and here's our original amounts and I have plugged in our conversion factor and notice that our conversion factor is always the same for each ingredient and that way we make sure that our ingredients stay in the correct proportion to each other. So we always use the same conversion factor for each ingredient. So let's start with our flour. We've got three cups of flour and if we multiply our three cups of flour times three, we're gonna get nine cups. And make sure you put your units here because we don't know if it's cups or tablespoons or teaspoons or gallons or what. So we wanna make sure that we uh, have the units matching. We've got one cup of sugar times three, so that's gonna be three cups. Three-fourths of a cup times three. This is where we're gonna multiply fractions. So we say three times three is nine, and we use the same denominator, because this is the same as three over one. We can say three over one. So three times three is nine, four times one is four. And that's cups, so we put our cups here. Eggs, we need one, and whenever it's by, when we're counting them, we say each. So we need one times three, so we need three each. Okay, then we know it's not cups or ounces or whatever. So butter, we need one cup of butter. So one cup times three, so we're gonna need three cups of butter. And the last thing is baking powder. BP in our recipe stands for baking powder. And we need two teaspoons of baking powder. So we say two times three, and we're gonna get six, and we need teaspoons, six teaspoons, all right? So if you remember, our, um, this was step two, we multiplied all of our ingredients by the conversion factor. And so here's our new amounts. Now we need to go back and check and make sure that they're logical, measurable amounts. So when we look, we can measure nine cups of flour. That's, that's logical, that works. We can measure three cups of sugar. What about nine-fourths? I don't know of any nine-fourths cup measuring cup. So that's one that we're gonna have to work with for a minute, all right? So let's go ahead and check the rest of them. We'll come back to this one. Three eggs, we need three eggs and we can do that. Uh, three cups of butter and if you remember that um, one cup of butter is two sticks so three times two that's going to either be six sticks and so when we're purchasing it by the pound we know that a pound has four sticks so six divided by four we're going to get two and a half pounds two and a half pounds of butter, all right? And then our baking powder, we've got six teaspoons. Now that means we're gonna have to measure six times, and we don't wanna do that. We wanna shorten that a little bit. So we're gonna um, fix this. So let's look at our nine-fourths cups. What we need to do is reduce that fraction and find out exactly how we're gonna measure it. 
So to reduce 9 fourths, we just say 9. This is a division sign, so it's 9 divided by 4. Okay, and 9 divided by 4, 4 will go into 9 two times. 2 times 4 is 8. And we have 1 fourth left over. So we would actually have to measure 2 and 1 fourth cups to get our um, correct amount. So that's our measurable amount. Two and one fourth cups of brown sugar. Okay, and our baking powder, our six teaspoons, if you remember from the last time, we know that there are how many teaspoons in a tablespoon? Three teaspoons equals one tablespoon. That's why it's very important to remember all of our equivalents. So we we can take our six and divide it by three, and that's gonna tell us how many tablespoons we need. So six divided by three is gonna actually be the same as two tablespoons, because three will go into six two times evenly. Okay, we don't have any teaspoons left over. So we've got two tablespoons of baking powder, We've got two and a half pounds of butter, and we've got two and a half cups of brown sugar. So that tells us exactly how much we need to measure, and it also tells us, um, you know, how much we need to purchase. Okay, that's all there is to converting recipes.